All right, so I'm your host, Sander Baltzar. I'm on the marketing team, and I'm joined by my colleague, Miles Cook, who is an automation expert and a security analyst here at Trey.io. So for today's use case, we're going to look at automating user provisioning using Slack, Airtable, and Jira. Note that this is what we use internally, but we could do this with uh, a number of other applications. Miles will show you how we can automate the process of employees asking for access to software or services. This was previously a very manual uh, process that required a lot of time and effort from many people to simply ask if they can have access to a certain software. We run this workflow with a slash command in Slack, um, look up the service in Airtable Air to check whether it requires approval, and finally create a ticket in JIRA so the team can track and manage all the requests. All right, so I think that's enough of me talking about this. I hope you're all ready to see the trade platform. So Miles, I'm going to hand it over to you uh, to show everyone how we can do this. Lovely, okay. Um, Sonia, give me a thumbs up if you can see the service desk. Perfect. So just to quickly give you um, a visual representation of how we used to do it at Trey in a manual way. Um, so some of you may use us already. This is Jira Service Desk, and we have it set up internally for a, a few different use cases. So before, if someone wanted a service, they would head over to the security HQ. Uh, there is access request, uh, request type, and then they can start putting it uh, or they're requested. So let's just say they wanted Microsoft Office, you know, we would get a few different types of mic. So it might be, you know, M Office. Uh, we could maybe get 0365, you know, depending on how hip our employees were. And then our reason for access, you know, for spreadsheets. Um, and, you know, this, this did its job for, for a while while the company was small. Um, but once you start getting into the hundreds of people and daily requests, having, you know, seven different service names for the same product, uh, you know, various types of reasons that we have to read through. And then not only do we have that to deal with, but then we must have to manually go to these services, log in as admin, and then add these users. So in all, uh, as thousands of these requests start to roll in over the weeks and months, uh, this can start taking a lot of time away from the IT slash security team. So, this is how we do it now. Again, just to give you a quick overview of how it works, uh, in Slack, you would just type in access uh, slash command. This one's called access request. That pops up a little modal. Uh, the end user then chooses whether they want to have access to a new service or to modify um, access to a current service. And we choose what we're after. So let's say we were after Office, Microsoft Office. And then we have Microsoft Office 365, a predetermined uh, set of value, which will make our lives a lot easier as well. Then um, it goes uh, to Airtable, like Sana described, to check, oh, does this something uh, that needs a request? And yes, Office 365 does require a request. So we do need to actually uh, give a reason. Um, but for another example, I'll leave that. Um, in fact, I'll leave the second example for the proper demo. So this is the tray platform. And uh, this is the dashboard view where you can see all of the workflows that you currently have, um, whether they're enabled or disabled. And I just have to search for my one here. So I've called it an um, access request modal new. Uh, there it is. And here I'm in. I'm, in, I'm inside my workflow. And for those who haven't seen the platform before, let me give you a super high level overview of what you can see here. So we call this whole uh, uh, big space, the canvas, you know, where we make our art, if you wanna call it like that. Um, and on the left is our connectors panel. So this is where all our connectors live. So let's say after I put that Slack module up in this workflow, I wanted to log that in, let's say Google Sheet. Um, I can just search, I can just search for, sheets over here and grab a Google Sheets connector and drag it into the canvas and set it up. On the right, once I have actually uh, chosen my connector, on the right here is my properties panel. And this is where I set that connector up. So, you know, it will have different, different calls. So for instance, let's say 
Google Sheet, let's say I actually wanted to add this logging feature. Um, under operations, I might want to say like create new row uh, and here's my operation. And then I can add in all my properties that I want over there. So I'll leave that uh, for now. Lovely. So now that we know what we're looking at, what's actually happening here? So when we hit that slash command in Slack, Slack will send a, a webhook to a predetermined location being this workflow. And then we've configured our Slack connector to bring up that modal. So once again, uh, we'll go to Slack, access requests, that Slack to tray, and then tray responds with this modal. Then once we start you know, selecting buttons, Slack knows to send that to a different endpoint as well. And that goes to uh, our second workflow. And you can see this is where the Slack endpoint would arrive. And if I chose, for instance, new service, that's a choice. That choice is handled over here on, on some of these branches. So you can see here, I've got a branch called destination workflow. And you can see on the left, I have access requests. And on the right, in the middle even, I have access modifications. So as you can see, I uh, selected a new request. So I would go down the left branch. And here then, it will start to ask Airtable, is this um, service, does it need approval? So here's an example of an Airtable with a vendor list. And again, like Sander said, this is just something that we use internally. Um, you could use any kind of, of database for this use case. Um, and here we've just got some, some simple things, uh, the service, whether it needs approval or not, um, does it require manual provisioning? So maybe we have another workflow that can provision for us using APIs. Maybe it uses Okta, maybe it uses Google SAML, right? So many different ways we can provision accounts and we all have it here in our database. Um, it, so it will query this and it will also query the person who's requested it as well. So, you know, maybe, and these are all just random names again, maybe Jarvis, um, you know, maybe he has automatic access to Office 365 because of his job role. So maybe he wouldn't need uh, to give a reason because of that. So these are all the things that the workflow um, will query. And obviously this happens instantly and then decides uh, what kind of response you should get. So if we go back to Slack, and this time, instead of asking for Office 365, which does require a reason, um, I'll request access to Greenhouse um, uh, because I want to, there we go, uh, because I want to put forward a referral, let's say. So again, it's going to look at Airtable, it's going to look at me, it's going to look at the vendor, and it's going to decide what needs to be done for this service. And here we go. Great news. Greenhouse does not require approval. Your account will be automatically provisioned, just follow those instructions. And here again in Airtable under Greenhouse, we've preset some instructions to show all of the end users. Uh, so please see the instructions and please log in uh, with your Google account, contact blah, blah, blah team if you need any extra privileges. And that's it, understood. That creates a very handy ticket for us in our Jira automatically. Um, so if I give this a quick refresh, uh, I can go to Office 365, complete it if it was a manual uh, a manual um, task. Uh, but again, this looks nice and neat. I know exactly who's reported it. I've got nice defined service names, which people can't change and put their you know, own unique take on. Um, but yeah, that is just about everything, Sandra. So I'll hand it back to you. Well, before before you hand it back to me, let's um let's go back to the workflow. Um because I think we can spend a little bit more time talking about what we're, what we see here. Um, and if you go to that other workflow, I just want you to show people when you were talking about like whether um, a service or an application requires um, approval or not. Could you just spend a little bit more time how we how we do that in the trade platform? And just a reminder to um, to everyone uh, that you know now is a good time to ask questions. So feel free to um, to ask questions using the Q and A. Cool. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. So yes. Um, so going back to the branch where we were discussing whether we need approval or not. 
So again, going back to the example of greenhouse, um, that wouldn't need approval. So we're going to follow the not required branch down here. And again, all of that information is coming from the vendor list um, that, you know, that we know that it doesn't need approval. So we'll go back to the workflow. So at this point, it's gonna say, okay, as I don't need to, you know, to actually see any reasons or anything like that, I'm just gonna start getting some information. So the first thing it does is get the user's Slack information from their Slack profile using that connector. Then we're gonna be um, using their um, ID to find their JIRA information. Uh, once we find, once we've decided whether it needs manual provisioning, we'll set a different ticket description based on that. And that will be automatically commented on in that ticket. Here we can see us actually creating that ticket with a JIRA connector. And then we just go through a few different tidy up steps. Uh, just because I'm importing some raw text from Airtable, I don't want anything to break when I put that into JIRA. So I just clean up any things uh, like any uh, characters that might break the workflow. Um, finally, I add some extra comments. So these are instructions for the people so just in case they miss that messaging on Slack. If they go into their JIRA ticket, all the information will be there forever. Um, that, that, by the way, this also uh, helps greatly with auditors as we go through our SOC 2 process. Uh, they love automation and processes, um, and they love like good logging and tickets of all that kind of all that information. So yes, once uh, we've created the ticket, created all the comments that the person's needed, uh, then we follow this branch down, and we can see that we will uh, display the last modal that you saw with all the instructions, and then we send that copy like we said to the uh, requester's direct messages. Uh, once we finish that, there are a couple of little updates that we do to the ticket, and then we're done. We're at the end of the workflow. And that will happen every single time someone uh, pops in one of those requests. Great. And this is related to the question that Ju Jubair asks. Um, so he's asking, uh, or they are asking, what happens when the approval is needed? Does it send the notification to the relevant department? or the person, and I think that you're basically saying that yes, uh, a ticket is created in JIRA. Um, and if we could look at JIRA actually to see what that looks like on the other side. Sure. Yeah, exactly. So um, as an example, uh, let me find something that has a good example. Um, yes, this is a good example here. So here you can see these automatic comments that we put onto the JIRA ticket. So this tells us what kind of restrictions there are. If, you, if we need to go somewhere, uh, who's the person's manager, for instance, um, and then automatically once something's created, it will check their security posture. So for here, this is a great example. Someone's requested admin permissions, but they haven't got the right security posture on their account yet. So it's automatically commented on their ticket saying, hey, by the way, before we can even touch this, you need to enable 2FA on your account, and then we can start talking about next steps. So this, again, helps uh, stop human error. Maybe if you're in a rush, uh, you're not thinking correctly, you would, you would give this person permissions that they shouldn't have. Excellent. All right. So someone else is asking um, that they want to see a user provisioning flow uh, with Bamboo HR and Core HR apps to Azure Directory and Slack. Um, so we don't have um, a, a pre-built workflow for that specific use case, but as you can see, um, and Miles, if you can go to um, maybe a, a brand new, if you could start a brand new workflow from scratch and just call it um, demo uh, or test workflow. Um, I just want people to see that we have those connectors um, available. So yeah, there we go. This is how you would start um, a workflow, by the way. Okay, so here would be our trigger selection. So we have a huge selection of services uh, with built-in triggers, so things that don't need a very minor work. But any service that sends webhooks as a service, uh, we support with our webhook trigger. So in your use case here with your uh, Bamboo HR uh, trigger, that would be uh, the one you'd want to start off with. 
And then, Sandy, if you remind me what the connectors we uh, we were looking for here. So they were looking for Bamboo HR, mm -hmm. um, Azure Active Directory, and Slack. Azure and Slack, nice. Just gonna call that a red hook. That is not spelled correctly. Lovely. So let's say we wanted to do a uh, a check on Bamboo employees. We could drag our Bamboo connector in here. So we get a webhook, get employee by ID. I'm sure that would come through the webhook. So we can just you know snake case that over here. Let's say that's where it comes. So the employee ID will come from there. Then you want to add that person to Azure. So we get our Azure Active Directory uh, connector, drag that in. And again, we select that operation that we want. So create user would definitely be what we're looking for. And then again, we can start taking that information maybe from Bamboo, you know, display first name. Um, and then maybe you want to let that person uh, or let the, uh, a team know on Slack that, hey, we have a new person uh, added to Bamboo. Um, they've just been uh, successfully or unsuccessfully added to Azure, let's say, uh, and this is why. So again, uh, you can say, this is the send message operation, uh, you know, uh, person has been added. And that's how, yeah, simplified uh, way of how you would start getting your workflow together. Yeah, thanks, Miles. This is a super simple uh, workflow. And, you know, you can see that this can get a lot more complex depending on your your company, your organization, the different departments uh, or roles that your company has and how you want to um, provision uh, users. Um, and as you saw uh, from before, our own workflow uh, is quite complex. We just showed you, you know, one small part of that um, of that automation or workflow. Um, all right. And, and so, honest, at Sander as well, just yeah. to add to that, like, um, like half of the reason that we have we have to have those other connectors underneath just depends on how the service responds to our API calls. So, you know, sometimes they'll respond with a list. We need to, you know, uh, go through that list. So that's the only reason, you know, we need to add a loop connector after the bamboo, something like that. But yeah, it just really depends on on how that vendor would be responding. All right. So let's see. Another question from Jubair. Um, how is the authentication done when we integrate with uh, third-party services like Jira or other tools like Zendesk or Slack? Yeah, sure. So it's, it's actually crazy easy. Um, so we, as you can see here in our um, connectors panel, properties panel, we have an authenticate tab. Uh, and this is where you would you would create your authentication or select some from um, some, some you've already created. Um, and they're really easy. They're just, uh, again, depends on the service. Slack uses OAuth. Uh, so we will go through an OAuth flow. Um, if I had a Slack app that had um, a slash command signing secret, this is where I would add it. I select the scopes that I want uh, them to have access to. And uh, I'll just do create authentication. Then it brings up the OAuth flow. And I just, you know, as you've seen a thousand times, hit allow. Um, at this point, the token will get stored uh, within Tray, but it will be encrypted and encrypted to your user. So only your user will be able to, to decrypt um, that authentication. Excellent. So basically, yeah, it, it will be stored. It will be stored uh, within Tray once once we've authenticated with the service, but in an extremely secure manner that only uh, you could access. All right, I see a good question from John here. Can you name the person in the Slack message with variables from the process step used before? I think if you could go over that um, one more time yeah, for, for people. 100%. So yeah, so within the uh, Slack connector, we have this uh, channel option. So let me authenticate it so we can actually have uh, some people. So here now you can see a list of names I can send directly to. Um, so this is, that would be everyone in our Slack community. But then of course we can JSON paths um, information from other connectors. So let's say you, you kept uh, names or IDs in Bamboo HR. Um, yeah, I could just snake case to another connector and you can see these are all the different outputs that we know that connector is going to give us. So for instance, here we go. I can say, uh, instead of saying person, I could say, I could use Slack's shorthand and say, I could say Azure, 
given name. So now the person that returns in that Azure connector uh, will be put into that message that says, you know, this person now has been added. And that's a nice little variable to have. Excellent. And you can also um, not only do people, you can also do channels if you want to send a message to a specific um, channel. Whatever is in your Slack instance, basically, we will pick up. Exactly. Okay. And, and literally anything that gets yeah. returned from previous steps or previous connectors, we can snake case into the Slack connector. So yeah, anywhere you store that information uh, and you know it's going to be returned in that call, we can literally just snake case to that connector and yeah, choose our output that we want to go there. Miles, we have an interesting question from uh, Parameswar, um, who's asking, how do you configure SLA service level agreement um, for some of these tasks? So if there is an SLA of 24 hours, 48 hours, um, how would you um, do this in the trade platform? I'm not sure if you've done this before. Yeah, so for, for SLA, that's a very interesting question. Uh, for SLAs, we've left that um, within JIRA personally. Uh, so JIRA handles all our SLA settings. So, you know, it starts ticking when, um, when we, we've looked at it and when, the, when our working hours have started. But if you wanted to, you could, again, make alterations to the tickets um, using the JIRA connector um, to make different different SLAs for different services. So again, you know, maybe you can have an hour SLA for services you know are automated. Uh, and once you know you're going to have to go to yourself in that Airtable, you know, you could have an SLA branch. Um, and then, yeah, that workflow could simply just look at here and say, it, please expect five hours for this to be done. Excellent. So instance, yeah, you can, this could literally just be like a unit of time. And again, that could be returned onto the ticket um, saying, please, please expect this to be completed by X time. Great. And that is, I believe, unless there are any other last questions, um, that we're currently at time. So there are just a few more things uh, that I'd like to show you. So let me go back to sharing my screen. All right, well, thanks so much everyone for joining. I hope you found this uh, demo valuable. Before everyone leaves though, um, there are a just a few more things that I'd like you to do. The first is um, another poll. Uh, so I just launched a poll where you can give us feedback on this demo. And we really do appreciate any feedback you give us. The second is a trial request. So you can start actually doing this on your own and building these, um, these workflows um, by requesting this trial. So I'm just going to drop it here in the chat. Um, and you'll have access once you go through the, um, the request process, you'll have access to the trade platform for two weeks. So you can start building these workflows and, and start automating um, processes for your business or your team or just you, for yourself um, immediately. And then finally, if you're not ready for a trial, but you want to see a more personalized demo with an account executive and a sales engineer, I'm going to drop another link in the chat for you to schedule a one-on-one -on -one demo. All right, so with that, um, thanks so much for joining uh, our, our demo. Feel free to use, we, we do these uh, sessions in, at this time once a month. Um, next week, we do these at uh, 10 a.m. Pacific time. Um, and so, you know, different time. But if you want to join us, uh, let me know. Happy to register you for that session as well. Um, so hope to see you soon. Thanks, everyone.